Welcome. I'm Amy Wheeler. I'm Marlisa Sullivan. And we are here to welcome you to the yoga and yoga therapy group on the Polyvagal Institute Mighty app. We are going to be your hosts for this journey together. And we're really happy that you've decided to join the group. Yeah, one of the things I'm really excited about is really creating the community of how we're all exploring these ideas of polyvagal theory and yoga in very unique and novel and inspiring ways. So I'm excited to hear how we're all doing that. You know, Marlisa, I kind of feel like this group is an extension of what you and I have been doing for the last few years, <laughs> that we always just get together and talk about this stuff. And now we have a whole group of people that loves what we love. So no, it's so exciting. Yes. So what we'd like to do is start with a little series where we kind of go over the, the models of polyvagal theory and how that relates to yoga philosophy, specifically the gunas. So today's just going to be a general overview. And then every week or two, we'll come back and we'll break down different parts of the model and ask for your input and your feedback and what interests you about this part of the model. So can we start today Marlisa, just looking at this seminal paper that you wrote, um, and I, I think it's kind of funny, maybe I shouldn't say this, but, you know, maybe people had this idea, and you can put the paper up if you want, maybe they had this idea, but it takes like nine to 12 months to write a paper like this. Is that about how long it took? Yeah, I, well, it takes me a year, personally. Yeah. So yeah, I just put that out there because yeah. a lot of people saw these commonalities between the gunas and, and polyvagal theory, but to actually sit down and do this is like a labor of love. And I am grateful that you took that year of your life to do this for us. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, it was an amazing opportunity to get to work. Like all these authors are people that I just have immense respect for and just great love for. And so the process of writing was like hugely inspiring and deepening of my own personal life and practice, you know? Um, so this is the paper that I wrote with um, Dr. Stephen Porges, as well as these other wonderful people you'll see in the author list. Um, and we developed this paper, paper called Yoga Therapy and Polyvagal Theory, um, the Convergence of Traditional Wisdom and Contempo Contemporary Neuroscience for Self-Regulation and Resilience. And the idea is really to look at how polyvagal theory and yoga therapy both help us to really understand things from a salutogenic, meaning like moving towards wellness lens, but also a transdiagnostic lens. So that instead of treating like this condition, this condition, this thing happening in the body, this other thing in the mind, this other thing in social relationships, we can actually work with them all together as a unified whole by really understanding the neural platforms of polyvagal theory, which relate to, they're not the same as the gunas. And that I think is hugely important to underscore, you know, to really appreciate the gunas and the philosophy it comes from in yoga as really a whole system unto itself. And because polyvagal theory has this similar idea of underlying qualities that give emergence to physical, psychological, behavioral attributes, we can see how we can link them together, understand them together, we can use the gunas to help us have a deeper understanding of how to affect the neural platforms. We can use the understanding of the neural platforms to have a deeper understanding of yoga. So they really just like complement each other and help us understand the human experience on a holistic level. Let me know if I'm talking too much. Yeah, I know that's great. I, and I, think it's amazing. So I get really excited about all this stuff. All right, so this is our uh, our main figure we have. And like Amy said, our intention is to really take the next several um, weeks, months to really then dive into each part of this and not just like us diving into it, but what we're hoping is that it creates a chat in the community so that we can really see like, this is how it, what it means to me because of who I am as a person and my interactions in the world. We'll talk about like what it means to Amy because of who she is in the world. And what's really what we're hoping for is to see what it is for you. Um, so what this figure is, it's the picture of an eye. So it's like the outer eye is this concept of Prusha, which is the observer of everything in the body, mind, and environment. 
And the inner eye is prakriti or material nature, everything that is the body, mind, and environment. And everything in our body, mind, and environment is made up in yoga of these three qualities of the gunas. So that you see at the top, there's sattva guna, which is that quality of clarity. You have raja guna in the bottom right, that quality of mobilization. Tamaguna on the left, which is that quality of stillness. So we could say, you know, anything in our environment, a tree, a cloud, the wind, has a certain amount of clarity, movement, or stillness, and that they're in different proportions. When we look at the neural platform, and we could say the same thing about my mind, any thought, any emotion I have has a certain amount of that clarity of sattva, movement of rajas, stillness of tamas. Anything that I'm experiencing in my body has one of those or a, a mixture of those. And in a similar way, we can look at the neural platforms and say the neural platform of the ventral vagal complex or the social engagement, which is related, which is a parallel to sattva, both give rise to these qualities of clarity, calmness, connection to others, compassion. Whereas the quality of rajas is more similar to that neural platform of the sympathetic nervous system. And we could even say when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, more rajas is activated. Or when rajas is activated, the sympathetic nervous system is activated. And then the same with Thomas and the dorsal vagal, that when the stillness of Thomas is activated, that can come into this dorsal vagal uh, complex as well. And then right in the center, we have this steadfast contentment of eudaimonia. So one of the ideas in this graph is that these neural platforms and the gunas are constantly fluctuating. And while we might at first try to really cultivate that clarity of sattva, ultimately we want to sit in that place of eudaimonia, of steadfast contentment, where I can really be with the waves of the gunas and neural platforms. So that's like a brief synopsis that I hope that we'll get to clarify as we go. Um, should I keep this up? while we talk or? I think we can take it down. Okay. okay. Thank you, Marlisa, for that amazing overview. And for some of you, that was kind of a review because you're very familiar with all of this. And for some of you, that was brand new and your mind is spinning right now, but you're all welcome here. And basically over the next several weeks and months, we're going to unpack different parts of that. Tonight was just an overview. But there's two things that we'd love for you to comment in the chat and share ideas about. The first one is, what does it mean to have these fluctuations of body and mind and even environment, that prakriti body that's always changing? Um, what does it mean to go in and out of these states? And then a second part to that is, do you think of this as a hierarchy or do you think of it as all the states are good? It's just using the right guna or the right state for the right activity, right? So I think sometimes we can get a little bit like, oh, I have to be sattvic or I have to be in social engagement. And the question is, is that the goal or is the goal to be more like the observer or the purusha that is kind of watching all the states and being comfortable in whatever state is happening? Do you have any thoughts to get us started, Marlisa? Yeah, well, I love like, you know, um, you know, this idea of being able to really, I guess two thoughts, like the empowerment that comes from when you're able to really observe things as neural platforms or as gunas. And I would say like in my professional life, I've seen that really help people with this kind of feeling of shame of like, it, why do I keep getting upset? Or like, why is my nervous system activated when it shouldn't be? And like really understanding that it's the nervous system that is responding to something outside or inside of you, that it's the guna's nat natural fluctuation to do that. It really creates, I think, that space where people can become empowered in understanding that life is always moving. And then I also loved what you said about something, you said this word matching. And I think that's so key of like, I actually want to match my neural platform and guna to the situation. So like there's situations that call for a little bit more rajas or a little bit more mobilization. 
And a really healthy adaptive resilient system is one that can do that well. Those are my two thoughts from everything. <laughs> All right. And the rest of you, we want to hear what you think of that, adding on to what Marlisa said, or if there's some refinement of that, or if you disagree or agree. We are really excited to start this conversation. And then in our next one that will probably be within a week or two, we're going to go into sattva and social engagement, uh, ventral vagal, and really get into that a little bit more deeply. All right. Thanks, Marlisa. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. I'm so excited about doing this community with you and everyone. I know. Me too. All right. We'll see you all soon.